Hey guys, got myself a 3D printer kind of recently, in the last couple months. I've been playing around with it and I've um, done a mod which I thought you might be interested in uh, maybe doing yourself. See, if I move it up and down this way, you can hear the noise. The stepper motor. Now, that gets a bit irritating because it's right next to my workstation. So I have this thing buzzing in my ear, but with a small modification, so go left and right, you can hear it's a lot quieter. There's none of that that high frequency buzz. So how do I do that? These things. Stepper motor dampers. It's two pieces of metal stamped out with a bit of rubber in between and you screw that down between the stepper motor and your mount. It goes right in there. So this is a, uh, a Wen Hao Duplicator 6 otherwise known as a uh, Monoprice Maker Ultimate. Uh, this is the original brand that uh, Monoprice have rebranded to their own name. Uh, and yeah, it's really easy to get these out. These, uh, This is the uh, X and this one's the Y. It's just three three nuts at the bottom there and here. And this whole assembly will come out, unplug that and it just drops out as easy as, easy as anything. And then this will mount in there. Now there's a little trick you have to do because this uh, this thing the damper actually caused the stepper motor to stick out just a little bit that way by about four or five mil or so. So your pulley isn't going to line up for the belt anymore. But I found out that if you flip that uh, pulley inside around, then it fits perfectly. So um, we'll pull this out, put it on the bench, and I'll give you a close up look and how to do this upgrade. This will um, also translate over to many other 3D printers. The exact procedure of removing the uh, the stepper motor and then replacing it will be uh, slightly different depending on your application and uh, maybe with the uh, the uh, pulley you might have to do some other little jiggery pokery but uh, it'll be pretty much the same idea so let's pull this out and I'll get on the bench and um, we'll see what we can do all right so here we are with our stepper motor and our damper you can see the uh, the bracket here in the pulley the pulley is going to be the hardest thing in this uh, in this mod because They've actually put some Loctite between the shaft and the pulley, so we've got to somehow remove that without damaging anything. Uh, the, usually the easiest way with Loctite is to give it a bit of heat. Uh, I'll get my little gas torch, but if you have a heat gun or something, that could probably do it just to release the, uh, the Loctite there. Um, then we, we, all you have to do, flip that over upside down, and then remove the four bolts, slip this in, tighten it back down, and we're done. Also, I'm going to use a bit of a low-strength Loctite. That's a purple one, 222. Just so that these uh, these screws or these uh, cap bolts don't um, vibrate loose at all, just give it a bit more reliability. All right, so I'll get my um, driver and we'll get these things out, and they're in nice and tight, so I have to upgrade. There we go. All right, so all we have to do is stick this on. Now you'll see when you look at yours, um, one side of the two holes will be uh, threaded and the other side will not be threaded. There'll be a larger hole. The reason they do that is the larger hole goes towards the motor because the motor has threaded holes. So that sits facing down, sits on there like that, and then you can screw straight through those holes into the threaded, like the holes in the, uh, in the damper, straight through to the uh, threaded holes in the motor. Now the top two are threaded that way when we put our um, bracket back on, the bracket has non-threaded holes, and then you screw through and tighten into the uh, into the damper. And we'll sit on there just like that. Make sure you get the uh, the wise or the plug or whatever on the motor coming out the same direction as it was before. But you can see there, it's going to sit further away. That's why we've got to flip this uh, this pulley over. So the next step is to undo these uh, grub screws on the pulley. Now these are often really, really tight. Oh yeah. And this won't just slide off because like I said, oh, it's actually this one might. This might come off a bit easier than the other one. The other one that I um for the uh the Y, the Y axis, wouldn't come off very easily at all. But this one, oh, it's getting a bit stuck. I'll give that a little bit of persuasion, but you don't want to go too hard on it. 
otherwise you're going to damage something. Oh, that one came off a lot easier than the first time. So if it's too hard to pull off, you can get a uh, like a, a small bearing puller that will clamp around and then you screw in like a bolt kind of thing in the middle. It'll push down on the shaft and draw it off. That's probably the uh, the best way to take these off. Give them a little bit of heat, then uh, pull them off with a puller. So we've got to flip that around. Make sure that one of these uh, the grub screws lines up with the flat. That way it's going to resist you know, spinning on the shaft. It wants to be exactly the same as what it was before, you know, the distance from the top or from the bottom, just flipped 180 degrees. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these uh, grub screws out, and I'll give them a little bit of Loctite. You only need a tiny little bit. Just a touch. That can go back in there. Now I'm going to tighten up the one that goes on the flat first because that's going to center. So if it's like this, it's going to kind of just try and get perpendicular and then do the other the other grub screw. Now don't do them too tight, but these can these ones can go rather rather tight. You can see putting a bit of bit of force on there. Now before you tighten these up, it's probably a good idea for your first time just to just to check it. So put your, your pulley on, don't tighten them up too tight, just, just nip them up, line everything up and put it back in the machine and just check that it lines up with the belt. I've already uh, tested this out, but uh, just, that way you don't have to keep undoing it and redoing it and messing up all your, your grub screws and you know, potentially damaging something. Just test fit it and then glue it all into place. So the next is to put our uh, damper on. Now these, you don't want to do these up very tight. Well, you need them, you need them tight enough, but you don't want to reef them real tight because you're going to strip out the uh, aluminium. The motor body is aluminium and that's going to be a bit softer than steel. So you want to just be a little bit careful. We got the Loctite, so we don't have to go crazy tight because the Loctite will basically glue the uh, the bolts in. Just till you feel a bit of resistance. I'm not holding it right down the end because that's just going to strip out. You don't need much force to to strip it out. So I'm holding it nice and close. Then you get a good feel of when it's actually tight. And this one can go on here. Same deal with the Loctite. And then just nip it up. And now that is ready to go back in the machine. So that's it all installed there. Got the uh, rubber mount, the uh, absorption damper, watch my call it just sitting there. I end up turning this 90 degrees. It 
from the factory the wires come out the bottom but because this sticks out a little bit further because of that damper uh, the uh, build plate bracket thingy here will touch that and try and push it up by a few millimeters that's no good so by turning it back so the wires come out the back there you can see that just there it means it's got a little bit more space and it does actually miss there so that fits there just nicely uh, as long as your switch doesn't fail that went hit there I mean if it was turned around and uh, back in you know stock and that switch fails you're gonna have problems up here with it crashing anyway so yes yeah, no no dramas there whatsoever now when you put this in to get that correctly uh, tensioned what you're gonna have to do is just put the bottom nut on and leave it a little bit loose so it can slide then pull down on that nice and tight tighten that one bolt up or that one nut up and you'll be fine you can let that go and it'll hold the tension put the two more uh, nuts on there and you'll be good the correct tension is just a few millimeters of play if you push that you don't want too much too much tension otherwise you're going to uh, bust out the bearings and you don't want it too sl uh, slack otherwise it's going to um, slip and it's going to be all sloppy and no good so just a, a few millimeters worth of play there and that's all good so that's all good to go let's see what it sounds like so if I go left and right That's nice and quiet. And backwards and forwards. That's going to be a lot more pleasant to play with now. I've got this sitting right next to my computer setup, so while the sprinting is going to be a lot quieter, a lot nicer on the ears. So that's that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, stick around because I'll um, do a few more mods. I'll show you how to do a few things like the dual fan mod here, uh, the silicon boot on the hot end, and also how to set up an OctoPi. This is a Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen. There's a Raspberry Pi 3 sitting behind there, all on little brackets and whatnot. So I'll uh, make a video on how to do all that sort of stuff as well in future videos. So keep watching the videos, check out the Patreon, and we'll see you next time.